set. Good evening. I'd like to call the first uh, the town of Berlin first public hearing uh, to order for the charter changes. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? No, sir. Uh, public comment. Um, would you read us the Article 1 local options tax? I will. So on, on page 2 of the town charter, it's an addition of the paragraphs as follows. We add paragraph D that, that reads, upon resolution of the select board or receipt of a petition signed by 5% of the registered voters of the town at an annual or special meeting warrant for the purpose, the voters of the town may vote by a majority of those present in voting to assess any or all of the following. One, a 1% 1 sales tax, two, a 1% rooms tax, and three, a 1% meals and alcohol beverage tax. It goes on to paragraph D2 to be added, a tax imposed under the authority of this section shall be collected and administered by the Department of Taxes in accordance with 22 VSA section 138. And then paragraph D3, revenues received through the imposition of a tax imposed under this section shall be designated for capital projects within the town. And that's the that's the Article 1 local options tax portion of the charter change. Okay, any comments on this? Yes. Why did you decide to do that? Well, we're having a lot of capital projects coming up and we what we were worried about was that uh, if we didn't impose this local option tax, <coughs> what would happen is your tax rates would go up, of course, because we still have to do the projects. At least with the local options tax, we are having people from out of town help fund them. Because the, most of the sales tax would be collected from the uh, shopping mall and uh, commercial enterprises on the Barry Montpelier Road, if the people there, if the people coming into town using our services are paying that 1%, then we get a benefit from it. Somewhat of a benefit, but there's stores going out of business all the time. Restaurants are closing. I mean, yeah. I can't see how it would be an improvement. Well, the thing there would be... And we don't keep it all. We I don't know what percentage, but it goes back to the state. Well, some of it does, but then the, the, the money that goes back to the state funds the funds the uh, pilot. pilot program, which is the payment in lieu of taxes for the state garage um, and those types of programs, the state hospital, on and on. Um, so we do get, even though we lose some of it, we get it back too. And the uh, the with what we have coming up, uh, just the Richardson Road project will be over, what, I would say three million. And that's going to have to be funded somehow. And this is just one of the tools we would like to be able to use to do it. Can I just throw out some numbers? Sure. I was just going to well, say, Vince has so done the mathematical. The, the tw for, um, 20, let me just make sure I get the right year here. $2019, uh, let me go to the latest, 2021 uh, pilot program that we referred to, um, we get of the 30% for the payment in lieu of taxes, we, get, we, would, we got $134,700 um, for the pilot program. That same year for if we had the uh, local options tax in place, we would have gotten just a little bit over uh, half a million dollars um, in uh, in local options tax for, for that. So again, I assume if everything stays in business, you'll get the money. Yeah. Well, this was this was based on 2021 dollars of what was in business at that. All right. You know, last year, 2019, uh, for example. Again, that's another COVID year. Uh, the pilot money was a uh, hundred and three thousand eight hundred and seventy-seven dollars that we did get. Um, and the, I don't have the exact number, right? well, actually, I think I do in here. Uh, I just gotta find the right table. Uh, actually, no, I don't. Uh, was roughly $477,000, so just a little under half a million dollars for 2019. 
that's what it would have been based on those dollars. And you bring up a valid point about businesses going out, but our hope is that additional businesses will come in and that will also help the growth of the town as well, as well as this to help fund the capital project. What, one of the, one of the down, downfalls in prior years was that Barry and Montpelier did not have the local options tax. Now they do. So it's not like they we're... Do? Oh yeah, Barry mm -hmm. just implemented it for 2022. Mm -hmm. It's effective starts October, October <laughs> this year. Oh, so, no wonder I don't go to Barry. <laughs> but That's all that would percent. all that would do is is just it's not going to take and put Berlin businesses at disability. <coughs> so, uh, Joe, you had something? Oh, I was just going to mention that both Barry and Mama yeah. are, are taking uh, are doing this as well. It is as well as you go to Burlington to say Christmas shopping and go right. to dinner. Burlington, Colchester, Williston, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, many Lewiston. towns throughout Vermont that have implemented it in one way. Mm -hmm. so if anybody wants to know, I'm going to have a list. Are there uh, option taxes full, full spectrum or are they still like for a while it was just hotels and uh, mm -hmm. meals and uh, <coughs> I'm not sure what they. I'm not sure what they have right now. I don't. Barry, know. Barry, with the with the adoption that they just did, Barry has the full, all three, uh, in place now. Montpelier has two of the three in place right now. So which are, which are? Uh, uh, let me just double check here. Montpelier meals, has the meals, uh, meals, alcohol, and rooms. Right. And Barry has merchandise as well. Yes. They just, just, just adopted that one. And we believe by implementing all three, if it were to pass in such a way, that it would benefit the town you know, greatly overall, um, and especially for the capital project, and to help keep taxes down for residents you know, if we didn't go this group. Right, absolutely. I, I guess I would just like to say, you know, I, I think it would be a great way to benefit from you know the people that are coming into our town that are not town residents I mean, get some rough numbers there just to uh, so you know our resident population is around 2900 residents but during the day um, we have over 12,000 people mm -hmm. in town and that that's here huge. for employment and so four times the amount and, right. and and I also think it's it's would it's really good to you know implement the you know the, the commercial um, purchases <coughs> you know, not just rooms and meals and, and alcohol because you know of of those numbers and you know I feel like we we have you know more commercial <laughs> The yeah. stores than either Barry or Montpelier, quite honestly. Well, rooms and meals, I mean, you look at the rooms and meals part of it. Uh, what's the, you have the numbers there, Vince? I, I don't for rooms and meals. Okay, I but I not for the most part, part, we don't have that much, uh, we don't have that much uh, restaurant business here, right. and we don't have that much uh, motel business here. Actually, I take that back. Uh, meals, rooms, and alcohol, I do have a combined number for yep. that if you'd like it. Uh, for 2019, um, that would have meant $138,868 if we had it in place in 2019. For 2018, it would have been uh, a significant jump, 2018 and 19, $66,238. Yeah. And 2017, it would have been 59782 for meals and rooms, yeah. meals, rooms, and alcohol combined. Yeah. And of course, the uh, the, the 1% of meals and alcohol, I mean, you're basically taxing the convenience stores for beer, wine, and then uh, we don't have any real buyers left in Berlin. And we have the motel, no, not even the motel. We have Applebee's and uh, oh, no. the Chinese place, uh, the but Boeing there's Island. not that, what's that? The Boeing Island, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but there's not that many East restaurants Corner. left. East Corner. And, uh, 
like I said, the rooms tax, we just don't have motels like we used to. But that's been a trend for a long time, long before COVID. That trend has been continuing. We do, we do have uh, uh, the one percent sales tax, which the town is working with the mall to try to take and develop a a, a new model for them to uh, thrive in the coming years. That's the town center plan, and uh, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Any questions? Yeah, Tor. Yeah, this gentleman was speaking up. What do you mean? Uh, what, what sort of plan are you talking about? What's that? What sort of plan are you talking about? You said you have some special thing plan here for the, for the mall. Well, that's the new town center. We're partnering partnering with the mall to help basically redevelop it so that it can uh, it can have a, a sustainable business model. It isn't sustainable all by itself. I don't why do we have to get involved in private industry? Well, we're not really getting involved in private industry. What we're getting involved in is, is helping the uh, mall with the, the permitting. They're the ones doing the doing all the work, so to say. So it's we're doing it to bring some dollars to the grand list with the development of the, the housing units over there as well. They're they're kind of breaking up their their mall property into lots. We're working with them on the subdivision of that um, to bring in more housing as well, like so it, like Fox Run, like Chestnut Place. So it's been kind of productive to that. You're now requiring them to, to uh, have an additional tax to collect. What's Fox Run? Um, it's a it's another um, development that's going in for uh, for housing units. It's a th three story. At the mall? I want to say 30 units. Yeah, I think it's like 30, 32, 34 units in that in that range. Some yeah. one, some two, and a, a couple three uh, bedroom uh, apartments. Mm -hmm. hmm. And Plus I've us. recently been in Chestnut Place, and it's beautiful. I heard it's really nice. Yeah. Very nice. The staff, the, the community, uh, just the whole facility is beautiful, as well as the rooms. Quite Fox, nice. Front, Fox Run should be breaking ground in the very near future. And then there is uh, uh, Starbucks has shown some interest over there too, putting in a restaurant or a coffee shop, I should say. Has the town made a decision on taking over the, the road? No, not yet. That'll have to be brought up to standard. They will have to bring yes. it to standard yeah. before the town will take it over. Yes. 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 And somewhat reconfigured, I presume. There is some changes on the in, on the uh, with the road, the access coming into it by uh, Walmart, but it's uh, one of the things they are doing is they're squaring up some of the corners so that it slow down traffic, so it won't be as rapid coming in. Uh, I believe if you want, uh, Tom Badowski or Vince can get you the, some of the plans, some of the drawings that they have. There should be a fair amount of it online on our website yeah, as well. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, there okay. should be. If there's something that you're looking for that's not there, just give us a call. Sure, thank you. And for folks who haven't seen it, we have a new website too now, and that's yeah. highly recommended to check that out as well. Door. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Troy Nelson, Point Ridge Road. Um, at the last hearing, uh, issue was raised regarding the language, the wording of the warning that, uh, as written, sounds like it would require two town votes. Uh, the initial uh, charter change and then a subsequent town vote at a special, regular special town meeting. Has that been clarified at all? It will be. Uh, there will be a revision to the language coming out. I'm, I'm working on that now. I looked at, uh, it was recommended to take a look at what Barry City used for their language for a little more clarity. Uh, and I'm also looking at what uh, the leagues of cities and towns have, have recommended, which we're closer to that than we are to Barry City. So there will be a revision to the language coming out um, to, to make it a little more clear. So the warning. There will not be two, two votes. So the warning 
is not accurate as it is right it, now. It is right now, uh, but uh, there'll be a um, there's a revision process that we have to go through uh, for the public hearings afterwards. And that it will come out through that revision process as part of any other revisions that that may come about based on the public hearings. So it will ultimately so. be different than appears in the morning in the paper. Correct. It could, yes. It, again, the, the revision will be presented, um, and then if, if the board approves that language, then it will be changed against what's there. But right now, what's there stands until, until that point in time. And we're still looking at a November yes. vote on this? Yes. So, I mean, time is running out to get that Correct. completed. Mm -hmm. yep. Correct. If, if not already flaked. Um, so let me just refresh my memory. So, um, don't you mention that the one percent sales tax would bring a little over five hundred thousand? Correct. And the meals and rooms combined would bring in a, just under one hundred and forty thousand. Correct. That's based, based on, on the prior yep. prior years. Pre previous, yep. So that's okay. correct. And then. Um, I guess, Mr. Sheriff, you'd go into a little bit more detail on what the capital projects are. What, what is the five-year plan, for instance, for the town? <laughs> You've heard me say that several times, five-year plan for capital projects. Well, but, um, I mean, what, what, you know, specifically are, we, are you looking to use the money for? Well, right now we have, of course, the big one, from, from my point of view, is Richardson Road. The culvert there is failing just the way the one on... Uh, on um, Ka uh, what was that? Fisher Road. Fisher, Fisher Road failed. The um, uh, I'm assuming the cost is going to be about the same, which is somewhere around three million, a little bit more. It's not quite the culvert that they're putting in there at uh, at uh, Fisher. Um, right now, we're they're doing the, uh, the studies on it, the um, engineering for it. Uh, we still have to get a hold of the state. I'm not sure. I'm assuming that because Fisher Road had to be an open bottom, that they will have Richardson Road open bottom too, an arch instead of coal. Um, those projects there is what is envisioned for them to to uh, use the capital budget for. There's also going to be some equipment coming right up. The uh, loader out here in the in the yard is getting. Well, how old is that one, Vince? That's uh, the loader. I believe is seven years, six, six or seven years old right now. Yeah, I think it's older than that. It might be. Yeah, but I mean that's starting getting ready because it's the same loader when you were here, Tor. So, it's, oh, it's more than that then. So be. I, are you inferring that I'm old? <laughs> no, not at all. Jesse, it's been a long time since you've been here. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, so that'd be, that'd be at least 10 years. So. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's getting the, where the cab is rotting off. Of course, it's running salt. Um, then, uh, of course, we can take and use it. Uh, we can use the capital budget also to, f uh, to fund expected expenditures on trucks and cruisers. That that sort of thing, so that we don't take and have hits to the um, hits to the uh, uh, budget. And along with the expected, there's always the unexpected, and prices are not going down, and they're most likely not going to go down in the near future. Um, so things are getting more and more expensive, and the longer we put off doing some of the things we truly want to do, like Richardson Road. It will get more expensive. I'd, I'd like to mention one other thing too, if I may, that that I discovered when I was doing some research on this. In, in recent state legislation, and you can go online and probably find out more. I, and I haven't done that in, in the past couple months, so I don't know where it stands today. But the, they're discussing a plan to put in place from the state level an increase of one percent to eliminate the local options tax um, that the towns that don't have it in place do yet and kind of do a, uh, and manage it to distribute it to municipalities. So it would be kind of like everybody's pooling their money and the state's going to decide how much gets distributed. Unless you have this program already in place, if you have it in place, you get to maintain and keep that program for yourself. So again, I don't know where it stands, but there's some risk there 
what that down the road we would lose that. Get? That's what we don't know. Uh, the, the, the state would have basically applied the lot and then distribute it however they determined to at this point. So we could get more, we could get less, but we don't know that yet. Um, and I haven't seen any any updates on that to to know if that's changed. But so there's a bit of risk there. They may not pass it at all, or or they may, but. Uh, um, no, but look, it's another reason. Say to, we to have it in place right now. What percentage do we get to keep for our capital project? Ah, uh, we get uh, we get seventy percent. Seventy. Seventy percent oh. is what we get. Thirty percent goes to that pilot program that uh, right. the chair was speaking of, and then that thirty percent gets pooled and divided amongst uh, the right. municipalities for Good. for state properties that they have in their towns. Vince, would you also explain, because you've said it before in another meeting back when, how the state manages it, where it won't fall on the shoulders of, say, anyone here staff-wise. Right. It's managed through the, the, the state, state manages the, and then the, the money comes program, in. Mm -hmm. And they just, they mail us the, they mail us that 70% mm -hmm. that we're due based on the dollars. So it wouldn't be reported. burdensome to staff. Right. From, a, from an admin perspective, there's mm -hmm. little to no admin for us for that. Thank you. But again, with the, with the local options, what would be happening is with the money going to the capital improvement, basically you would no longer, you would have a, a, bree a breather of about 500000 on your taxes. In other words, if <coughs> Riches and Road comes in, and I'm assuming it's going to be at least three million, but that will no longer show up on your on an increase in your taxes to, to fund that project. It'll be the it'll be the, the sales tax basically that will fund that project. And I don't know, I can't remember. We got a couple other culverts. We got two out here on Crosstown, and we've got uh, the ones down there between the state police barracks and. Uh, Paint North, Paint, no, those two yeah, those two there, and those so far we've had them inspected, and they said they were fine, but then again they said that uh, Fisher Road was fine too. <laughs> it only took a couple of years for that to change. So yeah, again, if you want, just as far as some information in town, I think uh, you know we have seven bridges that we have to maintain, and we have 518 culverts different sizes and conditions throughout town. So that's all that's all part of it. And those that you're saying are part of those five hundred and eighteen. Yeah. So But those will be the big big money ones. Those culverts. Anything else? I pardon my have asking for further clarification on the numbers again. Sure. But as I understand it, you said five hundred thousand in income from the option tax. That is uh, previously, we were we would have gotten 134. So the 500 is inclusive of the 134. No, the, there's two different numbers for just the sales portion. Right. It was it's a little over five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. For the meals, rooms, and alcohol, yeah. it would have been 138,868 in 2019. Right. So. Okay. So it wasn't a, the, the 500 wasn't actually a gain of 366 because it didn't need to. And, and I understand that the meals is separate. In the, in the Never mind. Yeah. I. No, I the one percent sales saying. alone would give us a little over half a million dollars. Yeah. You're interested. Finger crossed. Correct. <laughs> Any other questions or comments on this? The only other comment that I was going to add is under D2, when Vince was reading it, he meant to say 24 BSA, and you just said 22. Oh. But you did mean 24. 24. I just wanted to make that clear so Sorry. it's in the notes as well. Yes. No worries. No, it happens. Thank you. If nothing else on this, we'll close the hearing on um, the local options tax, and Vince, could you... Read to us the next one. Yep, that would be uh, Article 2, and it would be elected to appointed clerk 
and under subchapter 4 of the charter section 4.2 4-2 elected officers item 2 town clerk would be we would remove of a town clerk for a term of three years and under subchapter 4 section 4-4 appointed officers we would add section B uh, addition of item 5 town clerk Any questions or comments on this? What's item five? Item five would be the addition of town clerk under the appointed section. Oh, appointing, okay. Yep. Well, why is that necessary? Well, we've actually had several people uh, mention it to us that we, should, that we should look into it. We as a board are not real sure just what the public's um, feelings are and it just seems that the easiest way to come out with a with a uh, finite answer is to take and put it on the ballot so we will we'll know so you're not you're just gonna suggest changing the charter well it'll be if, if We'll take and run it through as a charter change. If it passes in November, it'll happen. Then if it passes in November, then we can appoint. If it doesn't pass in November, we'll go through. They'll be elected. It won't change any we'll today. November anyway, because the charter change won't be changed. No, but it'll it'll take and change the probably the, in January when the legislature gets back in the right. session, because okay. even. The, the legislature has to approve all the charter changes. But in November, we'll be electing a, a, a right? March. Oh, March, right? In March. So, I guess. Uh, I like it, I guess I. <laughs> I like the way things were, I guess. I had no problem. I mean, like, what? Problem? Did you have with it? You said people said stuff to you, and what? What problem? Well, there was there was several comments about um, uh, from uh, uh, about the uh, the computer or the, or the records were not computerized. The uh, people instead of being able to sit at their computer and get to the records, and uh, they had to come up here and and uh, go through the vault. One of the things that we did notice was if it had been computerized uh, before, and we've had the program four years, five years, for it to be done. If it had been done, then these COVID wouldn't have affected the, uh, the uh, you wouldn't have had to worry about the COVID in the vault. You could have just, they could have done it from their computer at home. Oh. And. Uh, most of the people that were complaining about that, of course, were lawyers, because they do a lot of the uh, title searches and right. everything. Um, other than that, we haven't really heard too much. Uh, uh, we were kind of disappointed that the, um, the program wasn't implemented back when we purchased it, and the program was not cheap. And it's, uh, that's been one of the, one of the, the major problems we've been hearing about and there were um, uh, there were uh, other problems with uh, uh, what was it uh, vault accessibility there was problems with uh, being closed on Friday uh, being closed on Friday wouldn't have affected the computer system at all and those are pretty much the, the, the big ones and even though they access them through their home computer, they are billed for it. So we still get the revenue from the search. Well, as far as being closed on Friday, I look, I mean, there's a lot of town clerks aren't open. Some of them are open three days a week. Yeah, but so, they don't do the volume we do here. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Was the issue that it wasn't put on online? Was, uh, was that a hardware problem, a software problem, or personnel not having enough time? I mean, do you have any idea what, why it wasn't done? 
It's a very good question. We don't have an exact answer in terms of why it wasn't done. Um, it could have been a combination of those items you just mentioned, um, but it didn't get implemented. And like Brad said, it was an expensive program. It was something that was intended to be implemented. And we're hoping with these changes that it will be beneficial going forward. You know, rather than look at what didn't go according to plan, there were many things that did go very well in the past. And we just think that by implementing this, it will help going forward in a favorable way for the town. The problem is that the software is already five years old. It's probably out of date. Well, the software is NIMRIC, and the whole program is, is old. But it's what the state uses, and it is still a, a viable program. And they've made updates to it as well. And our staff is familiar with it and using it, and they speak highly of it, that they understand it, it's working well for them. So that's what, good, too. What's that? I was speaking about Diane, Diane Isabel. She's spoken to us about NEMRIC, and she knows it, in my opinion, inside and out. She's very good with it. Uh, and she needed an assistant? Was that Diane? Yeah. Well, yes, because the person we hired is actually an assistant to Diane and events in the administrator. And one of the problems we're having, Diane was having is she didn't have enough time to take and start digitizing all her records. And the, the person we hired is going to start, has started to digitize the records so that everything will be in the computer, which will speed up uh, searches and everything else as far as access goes. And we could have hired, I suppose we could have hired a company to do it, but we figured if we took and had an employee here, they could do it and also help Diane during tax season and uh, take over some of the billing for the water sewer. Because that's one of the things that drags Diane down is the, having to do the billing. Tor? Um. Thank you. So is it safe to assume then that you don't have any type of a draft position description in mind at this point as far as what you want to see from the town clerk's office? Well, the town clerk, um, the, the, the actual job description is in statute. But as, but as far as... I mean, the, the, the duties are, but as far as like the hours, the, you know, computerizing, the, you know, the, I guess the logistics type of thing versus the well, one, actual day-to-day -day duties. Yeah, one of the, uh, one of the things is uh, state statute requires we have an assistant town clerk. An assistant town clerk? Is that what you said? Yeah, uh, it, it's, in, it's in statute. You have to have an assistant town clerk and with... Of course, that is appointed by the town clerk. She has, since then, since being appointed as town clerk, she has appointed an assistant. And that would be one of the projects that to take and keep her busy, is to take and do the, the digitization of all the records in the vault to get it loaded. Um, but any changes to like the office hours or anything like that? Well, the thing there is, we ex we when we hired the town clerk, we did we told her we expected uh, five five days a week. Um, how she and her assistant did it, that's up to her. But the only expectation we had, and we can't really have too much say in it until she, if unless she becomes appointed. It, well, this is my, that's, I guess that's my question: is what am I being asked to approve as a voter? What you know, what with this new I won't say position, but you know, the, the new without operations any, look like yeah. in the future, or what do you envision it to look like in the future? What what well, are you hoping to get out of this? Well, I'm hoping to see the town clerk's office opens five days a week, eight to five, eight to four, with not necessarily both of them there at the same time, but at least have somebody there for to have the vault open in for access. Um, you would mentioned the assistant town clerk. Why didn't you go ahead and add the appointment of the assistant town clerk to this charter change as well? 
because it's, 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 it's even if we appoint the town clerk, it's her job to appoint the assistant. But you, through the charter change, could put it on the select board to appoint the town clerk. That's what the whole charter change well, is. That, to do it, things would, that are, it would change. Do it things from, other than what the state statute already yeah. allows. Yeah. So make that step now, because half the problem I think is that you know who one of the previous appointed town clerks wanted to appoint as a assistant town clerk, without getting into that whole mess again. I mean, I think that's kind of what is driving all of this. I think people got their their feelings hurt, and. Doing it this way really doesn't solve that problem. Well, at the same time, though, Tori, you have to, for that office, you you have to have two people that can get along. And I would rather have the the an appoint uh, a town clerk appoint her assistant than to have the board do it. You just went through that with the treasurer, though. That apparently doesn't that wasn't. Understood. Well, the treasurer is no longer. A, a voted position. That's all uh, right. But 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 the select board appointed the assistant treasurer, not the treasurer. Because and Diane, there's not and apparently there's not an issue of them getting along. So I don't know why. Uh, D Diane, I'm, I'm not saying the town clerk shouldn't have input into the process. Yeah. But well, Diane didn't have the authority to. There's no nothing in statute says you have to have a assistant treasurer. Correct. Diane is getting ready to retire in three years, is it? Don't say that. <laughs> and no, we, we gotta have some, it either. Yeah, we gotta have somebody in there that's up to speed and be able to take over. And one of the troubles that was worrying me was if something should happen to Diane before we hired an assistant, where would the town be? You know, if Diane had an accident, whatever. Where would the town be with no treasure? Well, I'm, I'm sure you remember, you know, the, the process for moving from the elected to appointed treasurer was not an easy process. We, no. We had a lot of, I don't say sleepless nights over that, but a lot of tears shed over that process. So I, I don't think this is going to be any, any easier. No, this will be no different. No. Ho hopefully it will be, but. <laughs> You mean the chair, you don't want people crying and handing the resignation letters out in the parking lot. Um, so, so one other question, then I'll shut up. Um, why not also make the move at this time to a town manager form of government? We, did, we, we discussed that a little bit. <laughs> I, I'm all, I, I personally would, would agree with that. But the, at the time, the board was there it was when we were talking about it they they decided not to they didn't see anything wrong with the uh, with the administrative part of it so and that's not to say that we won't make that change in the future but at that time at that current board and the discussion um, you know, Vince was just barely coming on board he hadn't been here that long he's really you know come on board and truly proving himself he's been invaluable uh, to all of us and there could come the time that we make that decision, but at that juncture, we chose not to. So, Tom is the assistant administrator? Yes. Yep. yes. And that's going to change sometime along here. We'll take and have uh, uh, Callie Streeter become the assistant administrator. She is Diane's assistant now. Oh. When we hired her, it was to be Diane and Vince's assistant both. So Diane had more pressing issues than Vince did. Right, Vince? That's correct. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so we just had uh, Ka Diane training Callie to take and get the uh, assistant treasurer's position down. And then as soon as that's done and she gets into uh, doing the... Uh, Putting the records in the computer, then Vince will start having her do some work in the in his office. And that's beneficial in terms of cross training and adaptability of staff, and just having more people be able to help each other, as opposed to having things just very narrowed down to what someone can do. That'll be beneficial as well. It's so all a succession plan. Too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Succession a lot of Tom's to... activities now are focused on zoning and um, right. water and sewer commission mm -hmm. stuff. So he gets pulled in varying directions. It'll be extra help for sure. 
And with the assistant uh, to Vince, one of the problems is Vince has said some very rude things and uh, that he's going to retire sometime along. What? That's what I said. But that's the, that's the whole... Uh, that's the whole thrust of this is to get some succession, some uh, uh, ability to take and not have to worry if somebody gets sick or gets hurt. They, uh, there's someone to take uh, take and cover all of it. Any other questions? I, I'd like to know how to reduce our taxes instead of increase them. And that's a very good question you know, for certain, and that's something that past boards and even the current board, I would say, um, I for one look very closely at where we can save and, you know, adjust, make those adjustments to keep the taxes down. And we're very proud that that has been the case over the last several years. On that point, one of the things that I have been thinking of is that with the current rate of inflation, you are going to see a spike in insurance and all our other fixed costs. How to take and keep our taxes down, the only way to do it is spread it out to somebody who's not in town, and that's the local options tax. And the numbers we were presented tonight, looking back at like 2019 and pre-COVID, et cetera, as we all know, prices are going up astronomically. Yeah. And um, that's there's nothing we can do. It's going to happen. And this is a way to help the town to take some pressure off residents. We're all, everyone who shops here, et cetera, or any of these, if it passes, it will affect. But in such a way that all those who are coming into our town, like <coughs> Vince said with the numbers of how many come throughout the day, um, from other towns, et cetera, or out of state, that will benefit us. And I'm sure we will have more and more businesses coming in as time You're goes sure on. You're sure of it. I'm certain of it. There's no doubt in my mind. Build it and they will we'll come. We'll see. We'll see. But, I mean, you have to figure the, from, from the town resident, you know, 2,900 people, you have quadruple that number coming into this town during the day. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Berlin mm -hmm. is the hub. On a daily basis. People travel through. So they're probably bringing their lunch, too. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> well, I mean, in recent times, you look at Applebee's, that's starting to come back. I mean, uh, when I was eating out, working, and I would take and buy my lunch, I'd either go to, uh, usually on the Berry Montpelier Road, all those restaurants, fast food and, and uh, sit down were all busy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's coming back. I noticed last week Kentucky Fried Chicken, the line was all the way out. People had their blinkers on, and wow. I hadn't seen that in a long time. And that excited me in that it shows that some of the businesses, whatever they're doing to draw the people in, it's working. You know, it could be an ad on the Internet. You try to go to Maplewoods at, at lunchtime and get a sandwich. Well, I mean, what it really means it's <laughs> <laughs> That's the unfortunate thing right now, for sure. And that is affecting everyone. I'm seeing it all over, for sure. Yeah. Thank you, folks, for coming out and tonight. Any other questions on this? Well, mm -hmm. we're going to now discuss Article 3. Yes. Yeah. If there's nothing else, I'll close the hearing for the charter change on the elected to appointed town clerk and open the hearing on Article 3. Uh, Vince, would you read that? Sure. Article 3 is the addition of personal property slash inventory taxation waiver. So under subchapter 7, section 7-3, it will read with the addition of penalty for delinquent installments, and we'll add the following, and personal property inventory taxation. And then it will go on to add paragraph C, which defines it a little bit more. When the total assessed value of personal property or inventory taxation is equal to or less than 
$1,650, the town treasurer may, after approval of the select board, waive the personal property inventory taxation. If it's under 16? Six, $1,650 or less. Of taxable inventory, not right. dollars in taxes. Correct. Right. Well, Defined personal property is, that's not just inventory. Personal property? Yeah, as, as related to this article. Be what? Store fixtures? Uh, that is what it says. It says yeah. personal property in any way or anything. Okay. That's I can define that. That's the way to define that. Because personal property is like my baseball collection. Right, yeah, no. Um, no, it's. Is section 7, uh, is uh, subchapter 7, section 7 3 only related to businesses? Yes. Is that the point? Correct. Yes. yes. So it's personal property, but it's within a business. Yep. Okay, that's the thing. We, we currently have a personal property property inventory tax on businesses what this will do I'm sorry to take no, go ahead. Letter, Mr. Chair. <laughs> go ahead. is um, exempt these extremely small amounts um, from that tax which gender like I think that 1650 is like five dollars taxes yeah, or something. It, 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 it costs Diane more and it costs yes, it costs right. more correct yeah. process it. correct and she's been very diligent, and she brings the list to us, and we review it, and then, you know, if deemed necessary, we waive it, approve the waiver. It was just the definition. It's just, term. it's not adding a, a new tax. Yeah. No. no, and it's not expanding either. Not Correct. Actually, actually, it's shrinking. Mm -hmm. It's just my ex I'll take the point, and I'll see if I can work with BLCP or, or find a better definition to maybe further define that. Yeah. That's excellent. Um, and then, mm -hmm. again, we'll make it part of the, the revision sure. of the language. Yeah. Thank you to her for helping to explain that. I appreciate it. Still good for something. Huh? Yeah. You always are. Anything else on this? Hearing none, I'll take and close the hearing. Motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank, thank you so much. Here. We appreciate you coming and in I tonight. Skip round here.